You're listening to the 5-Minute Friday podcast episode of The Aligned Self. This is your host, Daniel Danovi. Okay, 5-Minute Friday, a short and concise podcast episode of The Aligned Self designed to leave you with a question, an idea, a strategy, a tip, a hack in order to give you greater access to your conscious awareness, evolving your conscious awareness, or give you greater mastery over your mind. Well, welcome into this 5-Minute Friday. And just like I promised in the last episode, today I'm going to talk about trance states, the power of trance. What is trance? How does it work for you? And how can you utilize it? Now, for your benefit and enlightenment, I do have a gift for you. It's a PDF download where I list over 50 different things that you can program into your subconscious, utilizing trance, utilizing hypnosis, and other change techniques. What's possible inside trance? That's available at yesdaniel.com backslash 222. Yesdaniel.com backslash 222. And again, the link is in the show notes. Essentially, trance is an altered state of mind where your subconscious mind, your other than conscious mind, is primarily engaged, engaged in the experience, engaged in the conversation, and your conscious awareness, your conscious mind has primarily stepped aside. Sometimes not completely, sometimes altogether stepped aside. This is why many people have the experience while being in trance or engaging in hypnosis, they'll say, I wasn't in trance because they had some kind of conscious awareness. Well, like I said before in the previous episode, it's a matter of degree. Your conscious, your other than conscious mind is always engaged, always listening. And you just sometimes have conscious awareness of that. And other times you're not consciously aware of hardly anything. Now, interestingly enough, even after all these years, Scientists and brain scientists cannot agree on exactly what trance is, how to define it. I like to think of it as a phenomena or an experience where I get to talk to an aspect of the mind. Now, there are some physical characteristics that indicate that you may be in trance or more than likely are in trance or how deep into trance you are. I mean, how far has the conscious mind stepped aside? Now, sometimes people say, I can't go into trance. No one can put me in a trance. I can't be hypnotized. Well, only in a rare few individuals that have brain damage can they not be hypnotized. But by and large, as a human being, you spend the majority of your time in trance. So it's not a question of whether or not you can go into trance. It's which trance are you in? So for this conversation, we'll use the definition of trance as this. Is the degree of which you are utilizing subconscious processing as a default. And so by that definition, trance is the perfect learning state. It's also the peak performance state. You see, when you're young, when you're first born, those first few years, you are in a hypnogogic state, meaning that children spend the majority of their time in trance because it is the perfect learning state. Now, if you think of a child coming in essentially a blank slate. In a very short period, they learn how to dress themselves, they learn how to feed themselves, they learn a language. And this is also why young children have the capacity to to learn many languages at once because they're in a trance state almost all the time. But they learn how to use a fork, they learn how to drink out of a cup. They learn all these little processes on how it, what it means to be a little human being. And the degree and capacity at which they learn is phenomenal. Now, it's about age seven where we start to generalize our experience, start to bring some conscious processing into it. We start to categorize different elements of our environment. You know, what labels apply to us? Am I a boy? Am I a girl? Am I smart? Am I dumb? You know, all those definitions tend to stick to us at that time because we take them on for the first time. They become sources of our identity. But by and large, we're being programmed at this time and our executive function, the the conscious aspect of our mind, really hasn't come into full fruition and probably won't until our late teens and early 20s. And this is why young kids and teens have trouble with consequence. They don't think that far ahead. It's like they want to do something. They feel like doing something. They do it. They don't think about the ramifications. They don't think that far ahead because 
they haven't consciously developed that aspect of their brain. But because trance is such a powerful learning state, this is why hypnosis is so effective. One can literally implant, install new behaviors, new strategies, new techniques that can be utilized by your mind, utilized by your personality, utilized by your other than conscious mind. You can override past programming. You can create a whole new persona if you want, a whole new way of being. Because at any given moment, you're operating from the past. You're operating from the programming that occurred, you know, from your childhood or decisions you made in your early adulthood. Now, earlier I said, you know, it's not a question of whether or not you can go into trance. It's which trance are you in? You see, anytime we step into a a process, a learned experience that has been relegated or given over to the other than conscious mind, we are in trance. Because that skill exists in a trance state. For instance, if you learned how to drive a car, when you were first learning, you were very consciously involved into every aspect. You know, every time you got into the driver's seat, you had to adjust the seat, you had to adjust the mirror, you had to find the key on the ring, kind of look where to put, insert the key or push the button now. You had to adjust the seatbelt and then adjust the mirror again, like you weren't quite comfortable. Now... All that's been relegated to the other than conscious mind. You jump in the driver's seat, you take the key and jam it in, you, you know, turn on the engine, you're off. You don't think about those aspects anymore consciously because it is a unconscious skill. And then when you're driving on the road, that process is also a trance state. You might be combing your hair. You might, some, I've seen people brush their teeth in the car. Some people read a book. Oh, it's horrendous because I do believe that you're, you can rely on your other than conscious to a large degree, but there is a certain amount of conscious engagement that you is required, you know, when you drive on the road. <laughs> but many of you have had the experience of driving from point A to point B and not consciously remembering the trip in between. And you'll arrive at your destination and you'll have the realization like, wow, I don't even remember the drive. That was that happened relatively quick. And that's because you are driving in trance. You have your getting dressed trance. You have your brushing your teeth trance. Your eating trance. That's why, you know, some eating behaviors are actually a trance state. It's an unconscious behavior. So any skill that's been relegated to the other than conscious mind that you are no longer consciously involved in is a trance state. And yes, you may make little conscious decisions along the way, but by and large, that those conscious moments of lucidity were given to you, gifted to you by your other than conscious mind. Do you remember how consciously awkward it was to learn how to tie your shoes and how easily you can do it now because you do it in trance? Now, another natural trance state that you may be familiar with is anytime you're thinking in your head. You know, anytime you're in your head processing information, processing thought, making assessments, visualizing something, daydreaming, that's all a trance state. That internal dialogue, the comparison and contrast, where you're comparing it to information, like making an assessment of the information, again, that's happening at the other than conscious level. Now, you may be consciously aware of some of that, but by and large, my friend, you're in trance. Now, personally, something that I find very amusing interesting, in fact, is the number of people that say, I am consciously in control of my behavior, consciously in in control of my day. Like I'm making conscious decisions day in, day out. Are you really? Or is your other than conscious mind making these decisions on your behalf and then informing you of what is decided? You see, the interesting thing about awareness is, is that you are aware of the things you're aware of And you're not aware of the things you're not aware of. Like, you don't know you're not aware of it. So that which you're aware of seems to be all you need to be aware of. It seems like you are aware of a lot. Well, let me tell you, there are multiple dimensions of perception available at any given moment. And there are different levels of consciousness through which you can perceive the world, perceive your environment, perceive energy through. So before we go, I want to talk a little bit about the depth of trance. Now, a lot of people have this idea that hypnosis or a hypnotic trance, hypnotic states involve a deep level of trance where the conscious mind has completely stepped aside. 
while in some instances it is preferred that your conscious mind completely step aside depending on what we're programming into your other than conscious. But it's okay if your conscious mind listens in. Many times when I talk with a client, I'm utilizing hypnotic conversations, conversational hypnosis, where I'm talking more directly to the other than conscious mind, allowing the conscious mind to listen in. And sometimes the conscious mind isn't really aware of what's being communicated to the other than conscious. While on one hand, it does sound like there's a bit of manipulation there. Consider that you're constantly being manipulated by the environment, by government, by, you know, your peers. You are in trance more often than not. So you're exposed to cultural conditioning, mass hypnosis, what is acceptable, what's not acceptable. And then there's implied suggestions. And this whole experience through the pandemic and the different conditions were set forth and the it is a great case study in mass hypnosis, which I'll probably do sometime, but not today. But as far as my conversations are concerned, they always take place in a therapeutic context, in a personal development context. And something that I do as a hypnotist is I install a switch in you. I give you ultimate domain, ultimate freedom to choose the suggestions which are most productive, most valuable to you for the integrity of your being. You see, I trust your other than conscious mind and given the right information, it will always make the decisions that are in your benefit, most benevolent on your behalf. And there was one more thing that popped in my head that I wanted to mention, but I'm running out of time. So I'll kind of just drop it in and you can do with it what you want. Peak emotional states are trance states. That's why conversations that take place in peak emotional states, anger and love, and like those seem to go right to your core, right to your bone. So something said in anger is hard to forget because it's cemented in right into your trance state. You're in the receiving zone. So I hope this explains a little bit about trance, that it is the perfect learning state, that it is the perfect performance state, and demystifies a little bit of it so you can utilize it for yourself. And, you know, in a future episode, I'll talk about different ways that you can program your other than conscious mind. But remember, because your other than conscious mind or your subconscious mind is always listening, anything you say to yourself is self-hypnotic. This is why affirmations are so powerful. The things you say to yourself, words are powerful. Not only the words, but the emotion that you put behind it. Remember I said that emotions are a trance state? And with that said, the implied suggestion here is that your other than conscious mind is so powerful, extremely powerful. You can totally recreate your life. You can re totally recreate your experience, recreate your relationships with yourself by engaging your other than conscious mind. So until next time, this is your friend and host, Daniel Danovi, urging you to follow your bliss, live your life from inner signals. These are the signals that are coming from your other than conscious mind, from your intuitive guidance as you live the epic adventure. Mm -hmm.